I like it a lot. Emma comes from the consumer business. She understands this well, and she's been eager to bulk up. But I think it had to be big enough to stand alone. And I think now you've got a $13 billion business. It's plenty big. They're the leader in the OTC field. They have a wide range of products. These products have a lot of stability. Unlike the pharma products, there's no patents. So the brand name goes on forever. So uh, right. two good moves, first of Novartis, and uh, to get the whole of that, this, and I would predict they're, they're doing 68%, I would say, within a, a couple of years, they'll complete the rest of right. it. Right, they'll Pfizer. own 68%. Yeah. Um, uh, Pfizer will own 32%. Pfizer has been looking, of course, for an exit for quite some time. Right. They thought they had a potential buyer in Glaxo at one yeah. point until they had to buy what they didn't own in their JV from Novartis. They <laughs> thought maybe Record would come along. They were there for a while, P&G, but they finally settled on this. Um, as you said, it's a, not a high growth business, one oh. to 2% top line usually, right? Right. Uh, Bill, but it does get a decent multiple to sales because it's very predictable. I yeah, guess. and she can take out a lot of costs too as well with Synergies worldwide, putting these two organizations together. Uh, GSK will have full control, so that it's called a merger. But Ian Reed, this is his last move. He wanted to do this for a long time. And no, so she's got a strong consumer business. And as she's announced today, she's going to break the whole thing up in three years or less. Yep. from the closing and it will become and its so own it will uh, float could even on the be UK. less and so we'll see but andrew Whitty was talking about this a long time ago david this makes a lot of sense and i think to be this pure play in otc and more of a pure play in pharma and uh, i think they're putting the vaccines business with the otc and what about pfizer from from your perspective uh you know obviously much more now a pharmaceutical company i was looking back at the wyeth deal from 10 yeah. years ago i mean they sold animal health or now it's part of zoetis yes a big part they sold nutri the infant formula business they got from Wyatt to nestle uh now this is also being sold but they kept important things like prevnar which is an enormous vaccine yes. and they have a new ceo coming in as well yeah and i think pfizer uh, one of the fighters' weaknesses is they acquire all these companies over the last 20 years, David, and they don't keep any of the leadership, the management, and a lot of the scientific talent goes away. I think to be a pure play pharma and get back to, to discovering drugs and to stop have such a wide range of business makes a lot more sense. With a new CEO, I think uh, he can do that, take them that way. I mean, I'm interested in the consumer health angle. David mentioned a number of names potentially interested. What else is in play? Do you see more deals here? Also getting thrown out is Reckitt, of course, and Unilever and some of the other big consumer giants. Well, they're not going to do something big. She doesn't have that kind of capital base, but she can do bolt-ons now. She's got the global base. You just create one global organization. Brian McNamara, the CEO of the Consumer Health, is a very good guy, and they'll, they'll create one base. They can do bolt-ons and add on more products, Sarah, and those are very stable, like I say. Those products don't go away. I also wonder about, you mentioned, you know, Pfizer now, much more pure pharmaceutical company. Eventually, that'll be the case with Glaxo. And then what? Uh, right? So the stock market wasn't giving them credit right. necessarily for these consumer-oriented businesses. Do they then have to go and be real acquirers in the biotech area, or what happens now? I think they have to, yes, because I think they don't have as strong a discovery unit as, say, Merck does, or Novartis does, or Roche does. And they got to get back to that, but that takes a long time. So I see them trying to pick up individual drugs from and biopharma plays, and they'll have the capital to do that when they can pull out of the consumer field. Yes. So again, both deals make sense. And Pfizer obviously has access to all that cash because the tax reform that Ian Reid was so focused on for so long. Finally, while we have you, Bill, GE moving ahead with, as, as they said, this plan to split yeah. off, to some extent, 19.9% initially is what it appears, uh, their healthcare business. Do you like that business overall? I like the GE healthcare business a lot. Uh, my, uh, the current CEO, Medtronic, Omar Ishra, came from there. Omar and I were just together last night. It, it's a very good business. It's going to do better independently, trust Why? me. Because Why? they need to spend more money on R&D. They need to invent more products. And there's so much capability in the imaging field today. But it's going to take a lot more R&D. GE was really strapped under ML, defocusing on it. Flannery came in and fixed the healthcare business. And I think now it's in a position under Kieran Murphy to, to grow again, but they're gonna to have to invest. I love the business, and I think Larry made a good move. There's a, for a minute, Larry sat next to me at HBS, and I was wondering, would Larry keep it? Because he's a healthcare guy, but I right think he Danaher, knew this was right. the right thing to do. And Larry can now in, build an industrial jet engine power business. We'll see where he goes, but he's got to keep moving. And I'm really pleased the speed he's moving with right now. Yeah, they are moving with all deliberate and speed. A very good guy. But I think spinning this out, they can be a strong independent business, and they've got plenty of bulk to do it.